masked heroes have come and gone. Some are around for a moment and suddenly disappear. However, others are around for years, even decades. They appear in books and films, they become household names, and then, over time, they fade away and become forgotten. This was the fate of the spider. A black-clad vigilante acting as judge, jury, and executioner. Check. A mask avenger facing off against a bizarre cavalcade of colorful villains. Check. A hero battling giant robots. Check. All of these superhero tropes we take for granted as the usual day in the life of a superhero. But these tropes and many more were first explored in the pulp magazine pages of The Spider. The story behind The Spider is not all that romantic. Pulp Magazine editor Harry Steger borrowed $5,000 from his stepfather and set up his own publishing house in 1930. A brief five years later, his popular publications was the largest pulp magazine publisher in the country, spitting out over 42 titles a month. He created what was called the Shutter Pulp, or the Weird Menace genre. These Weird Menace pulps sold really well but they were responsible for the public's negative view of the pulp magazine. Many cities and municipalities outlawed these magazines or prohibited them from being on display. Street and Smith was a rival publisher who began publishing The Shadow in 1930. In a very short time, it became king of the magazine rack. Steger wanted his own shadow, and he dreamed up the perfect name for a character who could challenge the shadow. The name he came up with was The Spider. He then hired Canadian writer Reginald Thomas Maitland Scott to flesh out the character. Scott was an engineer and military man. He had traveled and worked throughout the British Empire, including spending time in Sri Lanka and India. During World War I, he was a captain in the Canadian Expeditionary Force. He was wounded in battle, and he took up writing during his recovery. After the war, he settled in New York City to begin a literary career. For the next 10 years, he found success writing detective and secret agent novels. He seemed like the perfect choice to deliver Keeger's vision for the spider. But it turns out there was a bit of a problem. You see, Scott wrote the first two spider stories, and Keeger discovered that Scott wrote what we would call slow-burning stories. This style of writing was not what readers of pulp magazines were looking for and Keeger came to the realization that he had to replace Scott. In the first Spider magazine, there was a backup story called Murder Undercover. It had a gritty, hard tone feel that Keeger was looking for. The story was written by Norval Page. Page was relatively new to pulps, but he had been a newspaper writer for over a decade. And at his newspaper, the crime beat was his turf. He was known for being a type of guy who spent more time at the morgue getting crime stories than sitting at the office behind a typewriter. Oddly enough, Page began writing western yarns for fun. A couple of these stories got published, but his editors suggested that his style was better suited for contemporary crime. After following this advice, his career in pulp fiction took off. Keeger may have came up with the name The Spider, but it was Scott and Page who actually built the character. The mythos they created goes something like this. Richard Wentworth is a millionaire. He's a World War I veteran. He's a philanthropist who wants to make the world a better place. He dons an all-black outfit and goes out to fight crime and right wrongs. With fists and pistols blazing, he is judge, jury, and executioner. He is the master of men. He is the spider. The spider goes on to fight all sorts of colorful villains with the help of a strong supporting cast. In his adventures, he's joined by his fiancée, Nina Van Sloan. She helps Wentworth with his activities and often finds herself in danger as a result. Ram Singh is his manservant. He does not consider himself to be a traditional manservant, but rather another weapon in the spider's arsenal. Ronald Jackson is Wentworth's chauffeur. He was a soldier who served under Wentworth during the war. He owes Wentworth his life, and in the Spider stories, he continues to refer to Wentworth as the Major. 
Another prominent character is Professor Ezra Browning. He was another officer serving with Wentworth in World War I. The professor invents a silent air pistol and a near unbreakable rope for climbing. Both weapons are a big part of the spider's personal arsenal. Last, there's Stanley Kirkpatrick, the police commissioner. He is always on the trail of the spider. In many stories, he suspects Wentworth of being the spider and tries to prove it. The spider takes a hard stand against criminals. He often leaves them dead. So that others won't be mistaken as their killer, he leaves the mark of the spider on their foreheads. The mark of the spider is made from red ink from a stamp ring. A typical spider story centers around Wentworth coming in contact with some low-level thugs. As the spider, he discovers that behind the gang there's a sinister boss with a moniker as colorful as his own. The villains he faces include the Fly, the Living Pharaoh, Judge Torture, and there's even one called the Batman, as well as another one called the Iron Man. Another aspect of the spider is that he is a master of disguise. He has the incredible skill to mimic people's voices, and he often infiltrates gangs by posing as some low-level street criminal. One ongoing personality the spider uses is safecracker and small-time hood Blinky McQuaid. And in the criminal world, Blinky is known as a stand-up guy. Criminals unwittingly let him into their gang. In the 1930s, the spider was every bit as popular as the Shadow or Doc Savage. His style would have a big impact on later characters like Batman. Norville's time on the crime beat may have taken a mental toll on him. He had a nervous breakdown a couple of years after taking on the spider. Other writers took on writing duties until Norville returned, and when Norville did return, the character of Richard Wentworth went through a transformation. The character began experiencing despair, depression, self-doubt, and anger, all of which may have been a reflection of Norville's mental state. Norville's breakdown under normal circumstances may have had a negative impact on the spider. Instead, this personality change made the spider more popular. After all, this was happening during the Great Depression, and it was a time where people could perhaps identify a little more easily with despair and anger. When Hollywood began mining pulp magazines for intellectual properties, the Spider was the first pulp magazine character tapped to appear on the silver screen. And in 1938, the Spider's Web was released to much fanfare and audience approval. The Spider's Web was a 15-chapter movie serial based on one of Norval Page's stories. In this serial, the Spider is up against the notorious Octopus and his gang. It was directed by Ray Taylor and James W. Horn. Taylor specialized in westerns and Horn specialized in comedy, and together they made one of the more memorable movie serials to come out of the 1930s. Playing the lead of The Spider, Richard Wentworth, and Blinky McQuaid was the talented Warren Hull. Hull was a very popular radio announcer, and on the side he began acting in comedies and musicals, and that led to him becoming the lead in a number of B-movies before getting this role. Ladies and gentlemen, with your kind permission, we will now take you to the land of magic and mystery with our guide, Mr. Richard Wentworth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hull's likability, humor, and sense of timing made the spider's web a big hit with both kids and adults, and ticket sales reflected that. The release of this film serial was the start of the cultural phenomenon that we now call the superhero. Going on in America at the very same time as this serial was the debut of action comics featuring Superman. In addition to that, the Green Hornet was one of the most listened to radio programs hitting the airwaves. These three combined to launch the costume superhero into the American psyche. That's a hot one. You better hop on it yourself. In a hurry. Three years later, in 1941, Columbia Pictures did another Spider serial called The Spider Returns. Warren Hall returned to play the role, 
but this serial was not as successful as the first one. With the avalanche of colorful heroes in films and comics, pulp heroes were pushed off the center stage. The Spider's magazine run came to an end in 1944, and it was a sign that the golden age of pulp magazines was at an end. Today, the Spider has fallen into public domain, and of course, over the years, a number of publishers have taken advantage of this. Starting in the late 1960s, the spider pulps were reprinted in paperback form. Reprint editions of his stories continue on to this day. And in the last 30 years, a number of comic book publishers have created new adventures for the spider. Unfortunately, the spider never found the same kind of popularity he held in his heyday. And most people have no idea the impact this character had in the 1930s. And that's why he's one of the greatest lost heroes of them all. Hi everyone, FizzFop here, and I just want to say thank you for watching. A lot of people have been asking for this video for a long time, and I hope you're happy with it. If you're interested in reading The Spider, check out The Spider vs. The Empire State. It's a great collection of spider stories from 1938 and 39. The Spider takes on a group of corrupt politicians who turn out to be fascists, and they have taken over the state of New York. It's a fun read, and it's from Age of Aces Books. Please remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I'm still trying to raise money to buy a new computer because this one doesn't have much life left in it. You can join me on Patreon or make a one-time gift on PayPal. The links are in the description box down below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, stay super everyone. Bye. Spider walks in the open, Monster. Does it not work for the police? Lawyer, when immediate action is necessary, the police are too handicapped by rules and regulations. Therefore, the spider must strike at once. Wait here. 